an open order of conditions where other work is required, and then we get a new RDA for some work. We want to make sure there's progress being made on the original order of conditions. And uh, well, there were a couple of things that we had talked about. And you know, I know you have to live in a mobile home for a while where the work is being done, and you're allowed to keep the uh, pods out there and the dumpster, but. Do it some trees that are required to be planted. Those are ordered. They're coming in the end of August because of the weather. The, the landscape was said that they wouldn't take root. So at the end of middle of August, I think it's August 24th. Sounds actually. They're going in. There's three pines going down the driveway, but I have to move the pots. So I was hoping right. I just got my building permit last week. So it took a long time to get the building permit. So that put the pods there longer than I expected. I expected to be back in the summer, but of course we're not. So I have to try to figure out where I can move the pods because that's where the trees are supposed to go on our first plan. So I can't put the trees there if the pods are there. Okay, the other so, thing is... But the ones in the back, I did put in three um, plants in the back, along the back. There was two rhododendrons and I have to get the other ones, a hydrangea. And there will be more put in, but he's going to do them all at the same time. Okay, the other issue was the... There was the float, the dock that was taken from the it back. Was pulled out, yeah. Now it's that it's kind in. of pulled into the paper road and it's left there, that should be taken out of there. We can't leave that. I was just going to pull the dumpster in. I was hoping, of course, to get the dumpster in the same time to put that in. The building permit kind of put me behind. But I, will, I can have that removed this week. And if the pods can be moved away from that edge, too. I mean, they were kind of tucked away before. Now they're right out there. And, you know. uh -huh. Are they on a area of pet that's they're on a, the gravel part of the driveway i think yeah, yeah. The driveway. Uh, but it's right where the trees are going to be going in there was a certain type of pine that had is that the yeah. same replacement mm -hmm. yeah we're play, replacing three pines down along there okay. but one of the pods i'll have to just try to what i might end up doing is getting one of the ones that take the stuff out and take it away because it looks like i'm not going to get my work done until december Okay. So it looks like they're going to have to pull it. Yeah, the I don't vegetation, want my stuff if you to wait too there. long, you know, it's not, I realize this hasn't mm -hmm. been the best season and certainly the weather we've had before that, but um, it would be good to get it in while you have. Right, you know, I think right I'm going to have to get a pod to have it removed and brought to a different s location okay. if the pods are going to have to stay. I thought the pods originally were only going to be there two or three months, uh -huh. is what my hope was. But of course, dealing with insurance companies and building permits and then Neil was out for I think what two or three months so all yes. the building permits were nothing got touched for a long time right okay is that satisfying yeah and DEP was saying that um, it's their opinion they'd like to see it repaired so I mean they were in favor of having the pier repaired as long as it's done right and there's no impact to the um, to the river or the, the pier mm -hmm. yeah okay I mean uh, with Mark's doing it I have so we, but you have a letter from him with sort of a sequence. Right. This was prior to this being submitted, so um, I mean, I can get a copy of that. I think we will just make it part of the okay. Um, RDA. Okay. okay. So whatever he's submitted, you're you found acceptable. Yeah. And DEP did too. So. Okay. And the Harbor Master did. So. Okay. All right. Anybody jumped over everybody? So. Yeah. No. My my concern was that before we let them do something else that at least what the original enforcement order that that's taken care of and that's those pine trees because it has been over a year now and um, I know other things happened you know but that's life it happens and those pine trees really should have been done last year so let's get them done they were done last year they probably would have been gone yeah well, <laughs> well that, that could that. be true but you know <laughs> there, there was an enforcement right. on the property mm -hmm. so let's hope that we can at least get those get your peer done and then right. you know slowly work with the rest of what has to be done out there. That's all. Bill? No questions, thank you. Richard? I don't have any questions, just one comment. A lot of the stuff that has been done has been done well. Thank you. So just keep it up and make it all We're do trying. well. Okay. <laughs> Paul? No questions. No questions. Lisa? No questions. Anybody in the audience? Okay, yeah, motion. If, if there's a timeline on getting that float out of there, too. I mean, that's okay. been sitting there for a while. I mean, if you could do that. Okay. When do you think you could get that taken care of? Um, as soon as I can get Joe Malloy to bring a dumpster. And oh. then I just have to get it. Probably next month, next three weeks. By uh, be the end of August? Mm hmm I don't okay. see any problem with it. All right. Did and you the hear that, Pat? The end of August. Okay. Mm hmm Okay. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. All right. So we have a second. 
I make a motion for negative right with the um, with what the, Pat just said. Yeah. Pat's conditions. Pat's conditions and that the um, um, oh, has to be out in the letter. In the letter. In the letter. Yeah. 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 Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Let's hope you get a good winter and the yeah, opportunity. I'm taking it. Yeah, I need a good winter. Just want to let my good see Mr. Bibiano in the hallway. Yeah. So he's not doing his perk test until the 21st, so he wanted to be on a couple weeks after that. I'm making a motion for September 4th. So it'll be September 4th. Yeah, can we do that? Yeah, I think so. Thanks, um, Steve Carroll. Do I have to First September meeting's the 4th, right? Steve, it would be good if you could come in a couple of days and give Carol a hand with some <laughs> stuff. All right. I'll go back and make a motion for 6 Fifth Ave to be September 4th, which is a Wednesday, everyone, right. at 6.30. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So we're going back to, is it Holiday. Nat? Yeah. Nation. Nation, 272 Central Ave Septic Repair. They got approved by the Board of Health. Yeah. I, was that all we were waiting for? Yep. This was um, Merrill Engineering was involved in this, Peter Palmieri, and we were just waiting for the uh, mm -hmm. Board of Health to give the okay. Yep. I make a motion to close then. Second. Was there any other? There was no other outstanding issues no. on that. I don't think no. so. No. Dragged on. Yeah, we went over the whole thing. Oh. Okay. Somebody wants. I have a second. Paul, second. Paul, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Okay. Um. So Clark Central Ave. Yeah, we'll have to wait till seven. It is seven. It is. Seven. It's well. A couple, couple of minutes. Oh, that's true. Okay. I was going by the clock. Oh. Okay. How about um violations eighty five and eighty seven Maple Street? Eighty five. We. We could do 85. I think we told people we're going to wait till 7 on that one, too. We could do the other ones, though. Let's right. do 101. All right, 101 and Vinyl Road. Okay, yeah, 101 and Vinyl. Um, we had written a letter. We're trying to gain entry to talk to the property owner. And um, we went out there last week, three or four of the members. Excuse me. We just need to keep the hearing going. So discussions can go outside. So we, we visited the site and we just looked at it from the street and then there are two adjacent properties that there's a lot of debris up in the wetland or against the wetland. So we just wanted that people take a look at it and we're going to start by writing letters, asking to meet with the property owners to see if we can get some cooperation on repairing things a little bit. It's long time yeah. stuff and if we can make progress on cleaning these up. And there's several violations along that several. stretch. Yeah. So we looked at the three most egregious ones and we uh, talked about starting with the letters. And um, on the person who's not responding and who has received the enforcement order and who hasn't responded, we might try a ticket. It would be a non-criminal violation ticket just to uh, we'll run out of any other way to get into the property. Pat, is there any way, and I know we want to have <coughs> some folks come in and talk to them about it, but is there any way that we could start by your meeting them or yeah. you and a commission yeah. member just meeting people sometimes people are intimidated yeah. by coming right. to the meeting but if you send them a letter and say you know we've, we it appears that there's some issues we'd like yeah. to meet with you um, we'll meet you on site yeah and 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 sort of ease into it a little yep. bit that's fine and it'd probably be good if there was some commission member too that came along on so that sounds good yeah I think it, it would be a better approach yeah, yeah. To and, just I, and we talked about this before I think that the idea of making gradual improvements you know given the fact that this may be an expensive procedure for everybody gradual improvements but the improvements have to start yeah. right yeah and I think yeah it's just we need to look on some of these people that don't respond is find out just what we should right our next step should be right. um, to move towards that because right. you know there are some pretty sensitive areas that as yeah. you say even if it's just a gradual improvement they've been there for a long time some right. of them yep. may be pre-existing right. right. so yeah so if we can quantify you know what we want done within what time frame yeah. give us two cars within two months or whatever it is you know that's yeah. uh, 
Right, at right. Least you know, because it is an in expense. The step in the right some direction. of that stuff is money that people don't have, but yep. as long as we're going the other way instead of making it yep. worse. Right. Penny? At least talk to them and see what we can work with. Yeah, and I'd be happy to do that, you know. Thanks for coming the other day. Yeah, Joe. no problems at all. Um, 73 Kent Street. 73 Kent Street, we believe was resolved. Um, this was kind of a misunderstanding between property owner contractor and us. And um, the materials that were put in to the left of the house and behind um, were going to be removed that day. We've been told they're removed. I don't know, has anybody gone by? Yes. Yeah. It, they, they haven't done a thing. I wanted to. Oh, okay. Um, you know, it was immediate, not when they felt like it. I was definitely under the impression when we left it by the end of the week that would be out of it, and it's okay, not. So that's not they done. They have done nothing. Okay. Well, there was an agreement made, but the work <laughs> hasn't been done. So we yeah. will uh, we will get out there. I mean, maybe it's an issue of contractor availability or something like that. When we, um, with that one and in the case of some others, I mean, I, Penny called me. She noticed it. And it's, unfortunately, it's one of these where we have a hearing a couple of years ago. Right. You kind right. of lose track of some of those, and then they decide to start the work. Contractor comes in, asks about some information, and apparently he he wound up with the wrong plan. Yeah. I really don't think that's our responsibility. I mean, the, they should be going to the owner, and the owner should be giving them a plan from the engineer. Obviously, we could give them information. You know, we've got a plan. It's from whatever engineering firm. But it seems like we could get off a little bit and wind up with some liability if folks are coming in and saying, well, what's the job? I mean, I. I don't, go to the I don't go to the building department and ask them for a set of plans for somebody else's project. We can go there and find old plans, maybe make a copy, but it's not, you know, they're not guaranteeing anything or certifying anything. They're just saying this is what we have right. for some information. Because we're assuming they have their water conditions and the plan is part of... And they should have. And if you, yeah. what we, Penny and I found when we sat there and read the orders on the site, that it was obvious that he had the wrong plan. It wasn't dated correctly and all that and like you say it's a bit of a misunderstanding but um, you know we want to certainly work and to cooperate with folks that yeah. come into the office but on the same note we don't want it to backfire and someone say well geez you know you guys told me this was because sometimes the properties have a lot of history right, right. it changes from when they submit the notice of intent till their final approval right yep. right I made it very clear to them that they should contact their engineer and if you have any questions of how it's supposed to be done, to contact him. Because they were asking Pat, Pat and I about the grades <coughs> and stuff. And I said, you really need to go talk to your engineer that did and it the turned plan. out a lot of stuff was on the, uh, the oh, other conditions. Oh, on the property. Yeah, well, yeah, that Shadow. too. Yeah. All right, so we can follow up on that one to make sure this gets started up. It's, it's not even a day's work. It, right. You know, it should be pretty quick. Right. 136 Indian Trail. We just <coughs> might as well knock these off while we're... Yeah, this one, um, we're waiting for the contractor to give us some uh, elevation and revised plan information. Um, uh, we talked to the engineer and said it's, it's been built a little bit different from the approved plan. So we're waiting to, for, for a plan to show us how different it is from the approved plan. I mean, I've seen some of your back and forth. Yeah. It just, I was a little concerned that, you know, that it was the abutter that brought this to our attention went out there. Right, it should have been the contractor yeah. and the property owner. And um, and it just seemed like in those emails that they were sort of a s making a statement that the that the abutter was, they were going to try to work out something with right. the abutter right. and, right. you know, that's not how it works. Exactly. Right. And, and I think it's a little more than a little bit of a violation. It's, it's fairly significant. Um, Right, so we, we gave him some time to get into us. He started talking with the abutter, I think, I mean, a letter to the property owner. I've talked to the engineer, but maybe we need to have the property owner give him a date by when he has to submit a revised right. plan. Right, and, and, and even in that case, it's not the engineer that's the, the issue was with the property owner. In the contractor, the, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, that the, the property owner came to us and got permitted by us, and so they're the one that should be... Um, Okay, so submitted plan by what? Soon. End of August. Yeah, well, they've already had a couple. 
Yeah, weeks. So I think could have. This, is, this has been week. a month August and a half. Before the 19th? Well, let's start with that. Okay. All right, and then we can put them on the agenda for the 19th. Yeah. I, I don't know if you saw the email, but Hen, Henry was very, very clear that he will talk to them, but he said. Well, it's not just, but, by, no, but, but it, Henry said someone can't make a deal with plan. somebody else. They, There's the, still, a, it's a water, <coughs> water, <coughs> strong they water issue. Right. There's that a plan, we, right. Issue. right. Okay. There's other abutters, too, that could be impacted and right. just could be worked out <coughs> to deal with. Right. It's amazing. Everybody's so anxious when <laughs> they want us to get the thing voted, and they don't really come around much when it's. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, anybody? I don't know if anybody here wants to speak to it. Uh, no butters or anything. Oh, for Indian 136 Trail. Indian, Indian Trail. Trail. Indian Trail. So, um, do we want to continue first? Uh, still not 710. Um, for continuing Fern. We could do um, 87 Maple. Sure. Uh, there's a handout up there. Yeah. yeah. And Adam asked to speak. Uh, All right. So I think several of the members went with Pat um, to see this violation. Um, I don't think we have to say that it's a supposed violation. Um, well, 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 good evening, everyone. My name is Adam Brodsky, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm an environmental lawyer in the office in Hingham. And I, I'm terribly sorry to have to be here in front of you on this. Just very quickly, uh, uh, Ken Duval, who owns the land, actually cleared the land last year. And at that time, there was a, a concern by the neighbors. It was brought to the attention of the town. It was principally a question as to whether or not he required a stormwater permit. Although um, at that time we were aware of a BBW on the back of the site, um, and there was uh, Jim actually went out at that Jim O'Connell went out at that point and confirmed that no work had been done um, in the wetland. In fact, no work had been done in the buffer zone. There was a stockpile of soil that was just within the 100-foot buffer zone, um, but uh, Mr. Duvall moved it out and put in erosion controls. Um, at some point uh, uh, this past year, he went back in, he brought in gravel and created a drainage swale. Um, at that point, the, the neighbors uh, complained to the town, and uh, uh, it became clear to us at that point, since he had put in a drainage structure, uh, that it triggered the requirements for a stormwater permit. Uh, so we hired Morse Engineer to go out, survey the property, and to put together a stormwater report for an application for a stormwater permit, which we intended to submit to the planning board. Um, in that process, we found two things. Uh, one, uh, Mr. Duval uh, encroached onto town land for some of the clearing. Um, there was a stake out in the woods that he mistakenly thought was the stake that delineated the property boundary. Um, it wasn't, it was just a survey point. And so we've encroached on the commission's land uh, for which we are going to pull all the material out and restore it and present a plan to the commission and request the commission's permission to do that work. Um, in doing our due diligence, we also came across a plan that had been prepared around the time when Mr. Duval had bought the property, which actually showed a small isolated vegetated wetland on the front of the site to the right. Um, Jim didn't see it. No one saw it out there when they were out there previously, but it showed up in a plan. Once we saw that, we disclosed that information to, to Pat and to Laura um, because we, we, you know, not in the business of hiding wetlands violations. It's not a bordering vegetated wetland. It's not subject to regulation under the Wetlands Protection Act, but it is subject to regulation under local bylaw. And so we're in the process of working with Pat uh, to put together uh, a plan. We need to decide whether or not we are, uh, should be pulling the material out of the IBW and restoring it or leaving the material in place and doing an appropriate replication. And that's something that uh, uh, Pat's going to consult with Brad Holmes, our, our wetland scientist, on over the next few weeks. Um, so uh, this is a situation where uh, there's no question that we have encroached onto the town's property for which we're going to uh, restore that area. 
um, and we've come forward and, and admitted that uh, inadvertently a portion of this IBW was filled for which we're going to remedy. So we will be in front of the commission uh, with a notice of intent and an application for a stormwater permit. It doesn't make sense now to split it and have the planning board do stormwater. We'll come in to you uh, with both of those shortly. And so uh, we're trying to get this all done. I actually have a draft of the stormwater application sitting on my desk, but we have to go back now and, and redesign uh, because we discovered that the IBW had been filled. So I mean, we're just a series of terrible mistakes for which we're very sorry. Can I just, um, I know several of us went out there and there might be some questions, but we really got other things going on tonight. Um, you're not going to, I mean, I think we were comfortable that nothing else needed to be stabilized. There's like no siltation going into a wetlands at this stage. You've no. got the hay bales in the back. Correct. Where it's close to that wetlands. Correct. I don't think there's much you can do for that isolated wetlands. No, there's, there's, there's nothing that we can do. Um, so we just don't want to see any activity there until we've approved everything. I think that's fair to say. Mm -hmm. And to be sure that when you put all this together that we make sure that we get all of the different resource areas. And I'm not so sure that there isn't um, a water protection district in part of that. One of the things Greg's looking at, whether the, uh, the stream in the back is in fact a tributary a portion, it's a large parcel. So it's a five acre parcel. So a portion of the parcel may be um, within the district, but we're, that's one of the issues that Pat identified for us for which we've got to put on the plan. Okay. Yeah, I just, I would absolutely, we don't want to see any, any activity go on there until we have a submittal and we approve it. And, and yes. unless there's some, unless there's some reason. Um, mm. Well, we, we talked about a submission for a notice of intent for the work that's been out there, but I mean, it, clearly it's a violation to start off with. So the way we've been doing this is a violation letter is sent, and we, in a letter that I've drafted that I've given to everybody, it's notes of our visit, and there's a lot of information we're going to need to get before we decide whether we even would review a notice of intent. I mean, it's, it could be an enforcement issue, or the commission could decide, could be a, uh, an order of conditions to repair it, or it could be something that is more than that. So, I mean, we need to find out, is it 100 feet from the wetland? How much of the isolated wetland was disturbed. I mean, we're seeing plans. We may need to confirm these kind of things. So there's a lot to it. How much, uh, what are we going to do with the asphalt that's ground up that's out there? Is that in the water resource district? So there are a lot of things, but um, Adam and Greg and the property owner have been cooperating, so I think we can sit down and, and get some of these things issued. For notices submitted, we review it, but we need to make sure that all of our other issues are included as part of that. Have they got a copy of this letter yet? I just gave it to Adam. I just this just, just got done today. Okay. Um, and and that's what we want to see. I mean, obviously, we could be leveling fines, the and we want to figure out where. Oh no, no. I mean, as I said, this is an instance where we've come forward regarding the the IBW. Uh, it's not uh, okay. the other way around. Um, the, the client has, has told us, you know, whatever it takes to resolve these issues and put it right. Do we have a time frame for you to receive something, Pat? That's all. Why don't you have Adam? Well, um, I talked to Brad Holmes. I haven't met with him yet, but I talked to him. And, uh, you know, I think separate from the notice of intent, it might be good to go out there and see what he says about where the wetlands are located. Because there's, there's an old plan that we haven't seen yet that showed the approximate location of the isolated wetland, which is only about half that's left, I guess. So it would be good to try to figure out where that is right. as soon as Pat and Brad come up with an agreeable plan for either restoration or replication we'll be in here shortly uh, the, we have a base plan that's already done as I said we have a stormwater plan that maybe need to be modified um, but you know the stormwater plan and report has already been done so it's just a question of figuring out what to do about the IBW so between now and our next hearing I could meet with with Brad on site Okay. Whoever wants to come along. We just don't want it to lay dormant. You know, right, right. That everything keeps moving because it is a major. And they're not going to store anything. <laughs> no, no, we're not. We're not going to be using the property. Okay. I think there's a boat trailer out there now, and that's there is. Good. But there's not. Bill. Nope. 
Paul? Lisa? Is there anybody in the audience for 85 or 87 Maple Street? Okay. We'll see you again. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I know that Fern Properties is after Clark, but it's, so it's going to be a continuance. Can we just um, do the continuance for Fern? Yeah. Like we have to open this. Right. And right. because I'm an abutter, I'm going to reclose myself from, right. from this. So if, um, Richard, this is what you have to. On August 5th, 2013, at 7, 10 p.m. in the town hall, the Situate Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700 of the Town of Situate Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Fern Properties, LLC, to construct a nine-lot flexible open space subdivision on the property located at 210 Clap Road, Situate. The butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. And we, uh, we've been requested to... Um, 214. 214 Clap Road. We've been um, requested to continue this to the 19th, we need a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to continue Fern Properties to 710 on August 19th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So be it. No Frank's exception. Yeah. Okay. Not tonight. Not tonight. Um, so Clark, Central Ave, um, boats, trailers, and floats on property. Um, on August 5th at 7 p.m., the town, the Citra Sit Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Citra Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Russell C. Clark to park boat. Trailers on property located at Central Ave. Um, is this 70 3 9 and 10? So that's a lot of maps. A lot yeah, number. Yes. Hamaraka. Butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. I didn't read that nearly as nicely as you did. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Clark. How you do? We have this for the record. Uh, Russell Clark, yes, number 8 Webster Street. Okay. Hamaraka. Um, do you want to start this? Yeah, I just have two things um, to mention. We, we went through the abbreviated notice of intent, and I spoke with Russell and his surveyor, and work taking place in a resource area, which a dune would be a resource area, Barrier Beach really requires a full notice of intent, and we need to have a professional wetland scientist or somebody delineate the dunes, the marsh, um, whatever other resource areas out there and establish buffers. So. Um, and we also saw the area of proposed work, but there wasn't a listing of numbers of boats or equipment that was in there. So it was really incomplete. And I told them we wouldn't really be able to, to do much on the public hearing tonight. Um, so I asked Russell if he wanted to come in and talk for a few minutes, but then we could get some additional information, maybe continue this for a couple of weeks. The other option was to deny the notice of intent, abbreviate notice of intent, and just say, get a resubmit, but I think We've been following this for a while. We've, uh, he got it in the day we asked him to. His interpretation was it could have been abbreviated. Um, but I think if we could get a full notice of intent with delineation and more information, we could really have a productive hearing on the 19th. And there was also something that was asked to be added to the public record um, from a group of abutters. So I just bring that up tonight. It's an email. Some signatures and some photos. If you haven't seen it, you can. Pat, is it the same notification for abbreviated as a full? In other words, is just would be my concern if if you filed an abbreviated notice. Right. You're recommending that this be a full notice yeah. of intent. So mm -hmm. this is going to get. Yeah. Do you have uh, the green cards? Let's give those to. Yeah, it's, Thanks. Yeah. It's the same as far as a butter notification. So that anyone that was interested would be here this evening and if, if 
Right. So, it continue, so if, if this is continued, right. Right. folks are aware of it, it's the same process. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so I, I think it's fair enough. I mean, there's a lot of folks here this evening that I'm sure wanted to have some input. I don't have a problem with starting some of this. I, I agree with you that we're missing information here. But why don't we start this and then we'll... Yeah, we can let Russell, because he chose to come. Yep. He didn't have to. So. Okay. I don't want to miss it. Right. <laughs> uh, I guess uh, with the plan that was presented to you guys, I just um, bought some land, 12 lots all together, and uh, just a very small area that I was hoping to use for, uh, you know, storage of a couple of trailers with minimal impact. Maybe some floats in the winter. And um, that's the bottom line. Uh, today I did call a wetland specialist. I called her in the morning and I kind of figured it was such a nice day that she was out in the field. She called back later. I happened to be underwater at the time, so I did not get the phone call. And, um, I did try her back again at like 435. I didn't get her. So I'm hoping to talk to her tomorrow. And um, John's aware of staking out that small area uh, yeah. to show it on the ground so if anybody comes out, they can take a look at it to see where we want to. Uh, right, the area that's the shown on the plan when you get out to the site, it's kind of hard to find without stake. So there was an area of proposed storage. So I asked Russell to stake that out. And then the wetland person, when they go out there, they can flag it and label it. You know, what part is doing, what part is marsh, what part is uh, barrier beach and, and all that. So. I think John did the uh, marsh line, which is probably pretty distinct. And then the tide line would have been the rack line. Mm -hmm. um, from actually uh, a lunar tide, I think it was last month, and it was a good size lunar tide. It was a 12.4, so that's a that's a pretty high line. Yeah, I mean, we just need someone with the qualifications to. No, actually, I, I think it's a good idea because I, in that storage area, I think there's a mix of green grass and crab grass and stuff that's not really indigenous to the area. So that's my own opinion. But. And. We had talked about um, some of the people that could be using this, and it's a qualified person who you were. I have uh, contacted Lenore White down at Plymouth. I, I, I had it in my truck. I don't think I threw it in here. So Wetland she, Specialist Consulting or something. Yeah, she. I think she is probably overqualified. So if she got the information to us, we'd still need a little time to go back out there and walk, you know, walk the site. So I mean, I don't know what her schedule is. Like I said, I, I think it was. Friday, I got your email and called you immediately. So I, I'm just trying to put it together, and I don't know what her schedule is. I think John can react pretty quick, but I'm not sure with Lenore. I have, I have not spoken to her yet. I'm, I'm on her answering machine as of today. Okay. Um, I guess we'll start. Penny? Um, I just want a full thing. I, I did take this plan that you gave us and I scaled it out and put a 50 and 100 foot for resource area, but the riverfront, that's different. That's 100, 200. Um, you know, I, I just don't even know where to begin. I, I know that you shouldn't be storing stuff there. They won't just have to wait and see you have it the proper plans to me for me to make any real comments. Well, um, well, I got the, we got the pictures and emails and 53 plus signatures uh, of concerned residents. Um, the, um, I've been, we've been talking about this for a while, something has to get done you know, immediately. Um, so, whichever way we find best to move forward quickly, we have to. Um, I'm giving. Is, that the, is it the sheet that you just? Yeah, that's a that's a from the bylaw of uh, Citra bylaw. Should I read it? Yes. Okay. A building permit shall be required for all temporary storage trailers. No person shall maintain them temporary storage trailer in the public view or any residential property for more than six months 
the building commissioner shall be charged with the interpretation and enforcement of this bylaw. Any violation shall be liable for a $25, day, a $25 a day each fine uh, that, as long as the violation persists. Question. You know, can I just, excuse me for one second. I just want to be careful, and I know that you just, you have joined recently. Right. I, I want to be careful that we don't intervene with another board of commissions right. piece. That clearly is the says building the building department. Yep. department. Clearly. And yep. so I don't want to yep. interpret that. Okay. I mean, I want to make sure that with, with many of these different pieces that we stick to the wetlands applicable or the e right. EP issues Makes and yep. if there's zoning issues planning board issues whatever that they be dealt with and not to pass the buck I mean certainly we but our issues it's should not be our charter yeah understood right. makes right. sense yep okay Richard um, my concern is this um, whether or not you end up getting approval on your wish and approach to the Conservation Commission I really think this is backwards and um, I just feel that this should have been uh, come in a long time ago before anything was put in the property and then go through the process and if you get the way you want it and you can store um, and it's approved then you can go for it but this is uh, I think this is just backwards and I personally uh, think that whatever is there should be gone and continue with the process and if you get it approved then you can go back well um, my two big concerns are similar one being consistency and not to see Russell singled out differently right. than anybody else with you know all the other stuff laying on the river there that's right um, and secondly like Frank said following the regulations and not uh, kind of making our rules as we go along but that's all I have to say okay. Kevin Lisa Actually, I have a question for you Russell. sure the trailers that you that the two trailers that you have on the property now who do they belong to uh, one is mine and one is a customer's yeah. okay so um, is your intent to store trailers of other people's on your property it's possible yeah yeah, depending on um, how things go, but I have my own personal stuff too. I could probably flip flop for that one for one in my driveway. That's mine. Okay, and then the the floats. The thing is, in Hummerock, there's not much real estate, so there's not much room, and I have a small business, so I'm not looking for a lot. It's just the floats. Uh, how, the floats in the winter how, time. How large are the floats? How, what's that? How large are the floats? Are they in the water now? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think one would be, I'm just going to throw a number out, maybe 10 by 16 is two of those. And then there's a couple other ones that maybe eight by, maybe six, six by 12, two of those. And uh, w what it is, is um, they come out of the river because you can't have them in the river in the winter time. You have ice, so it'll, it'll take them. So it's, it's just a, a convenient place to put them. So basically, I, as I feel, I, everything there is dormant during the winter. And they usually go up sometime in late October, early November, and they're off by probably mid-April. Okay. Go and on. then there's another question, because I saw the photos, yeah. and I haven't lived on Hummer Rock that long, so I, I haven't experienced. But I did see the photos that with the water all um, flooded and that whole area flooded, and it appeared by looking at those photos that whatever would be on your lot would end up back in the river. Mm -hmm. well, do, you, do you think that probably is a good possibility? Uh, it, all the Hummer Rock Beach could end up in the river. Could end up on the Marshfield side. Absolutely. It's a sandbar. Including my house. Mm -hmm. okay. But I chose to live there. Thank you very much. Uh, getting to Lisa's question, that's one of the things that we expect to see in the notice of the tent. How big are these floats, and how many of them, and how many boats? So yeah, that was reference, and I, I, I can do a little. Yeah. It's very hard to make a decision if we don't know it's going to be there. The other part, getting to what yeah. Richard said, was, you know, there was a choice in the beginning. We wrote an enforcement order. You could remove it, and then we'd go away, or you could choose to file, in which case the commission allowed to choose you to file. So we could have said you have to get it out and go on that route. 
So we allow it to choose you to file. But if we don't get the information in to make the decision, um, you know, the other options would be deny it. So um, oh, no, I'm working towards it. I, I think, okay. Yeah. And we do need we do need the information. It has to be correct. You go through that checklist and notice of intent. If it's not all there. It's going to be denied, and you're back to square one, and we're just doing enforcement. So, I mean, just to tell you how it works, there's been chances given, and the information has to come in. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do have a question. I'm sorry, I don't know if this is relevant. Um, when you when you store trailers on property, and maybe Pat, you can answer that. If you're st storing something that belongs to yourself on your own property. I think it would fall under one scenario, but if you start storing the customers, does that doesn't that turn the land more into commercial? Not well, for wetland protection. Yeah, okay. It's it's yeah. irrelevant. That's what I I, I it think is. we have to be careful yeah. that well, we don't. Well, I wasn't don't. sure. That's sure. That's right. why I just figured I'd ask. Yeah. What I wanted to say is I think Lisa did bring up a very very pertinent concern, and that is, um, it is subject to flooding. And yes, I choose to live in Hamrock in spite of it and have a house there and two others on this committee do and you do that's one thing to have stuff that can float away just literally float away in a storm is something else that's of a major concern and you're on the riverbank you're in the dune and it is true last year may have been a bad year but it's happened before where and, and we're very concerned and in, in the interest of consistency we're very concerned about anything even under people's houses in the winter that is not secured so that it won't float away. So there are some really major concerns here. Um, I may ask you at some point to recuse yourself, and I think I'll bring that uh, information in tomorrow. Um, I had done some research, and maybe I should wait for this, but I think I'll bring that in tomorrow. Okay. Um, we have a large, I, I'm assuming most of the folks that are here are, have an interest in this. Um, I hope that everybody understood that we're going to wind up continuing this because we want more information from Mr. Clark. We need to have additional um, idea of what resource area we're in, some elevation. We want to know what his plans are for this. So there's, there's a lot more to go, but I think in fairness to the folks out there, take a couple of minutes and, and give us your concerns. One of the things that we try to do for both sides is when we request information, we have enough time for everybody to really take a look and disseminate that information. I think, I know that there's been some things have come to the commission, but the packet that I'm seeing has dates of the 5th on it, right? So I think in, you know, we'll, we can talk about it, but in time for the commission to take a look at it and really study it. I, for one, finally got down. I mean, I've been to Hamarok, obviously, with all the storm issues this winter several times, but had really bypassed that spot until Sunday and had a chance to take a look at it. So um, I think in fairness to everybody, we, we want to make sure we do that. And then just regardless of how many people have a petition or whatever, the process is the same. I mean, we are going to go through the same process for Mr. Clark that we would go through for anybody else that's having a, a hearing in Hamrock. And, and we, we're going to make sure that we get all the information that we can, that we hear the people that are impacted or, or, or grieved or, or whatever. But the, the process still has to be the same. And, and I hope everyone can appreciate that for both sides. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and anybody that wants to speak has to give their name and address. Uh, Keith Jansen, 148 Central, may approach. I've got some pictures. Sure. I was the one who sent them. Yep. And also, uh, for the record, uh, all of those pictures that were sent were contained in uh, letters I had sent to the conservation agent over the last uh, several months and are in the file. So uh, there is nothing new, quite frankly. A couple of things. Um, I think we all recognize that Helmerop is a barrier beach and the property uh, uh, at hand is zoned currently uh, as a deed with the salt marsh and tidewater conservation land. In terms of the uh, what the uh, architect or uh, surveyor had done is frankly grossly inaccurate because when you look at the aerial view compared to what's on the plan, it was off by 50 feet. Mm -hmm. There were gross inaccuracies. So I want the board also um, for the record that uh, you know despite it being a bridge version, it was grossly grossly inaccurate. Secondarily, uh, two weeks ago, in, a, um, um, in the hearing, 
to discuss how uh, deep trench marks were not being made and also uh, sensitive um, uh, plant life was not being threatened. However, uh, these photos. Kenny, do you want to see any of this? Do you want us to? Um, no, I'm, I'm all set. Okay. I've, I've been out there. Thank you. Sorry. Um, however, uh, this photo and actually all these photos were taken on uh, June the 2nd after Mr. Clark had uh, deposited the second trailer. Uh, I'm not a uh, uh, herbal life specialist. However, I can tell you that that cedar tree doesn't look like it's doing too well. I'm actually trying to grow up through uh, the center of uh, that trailer. Also, some deep ruts and also uh, plant life that was, in fact, damaged. <coughs> Furthermore, today, one of the uh, floats was picked up. And you can see continued track marks as well, Oops. Uh, as well as continued track marks all the way into the very, very back. So the um, uh, uh, plant life is being trampled. Secondarily, regarding the fact that this area does flood, it floods very, very badly. There were three storms in a span of three months that occurred in Hamarok. We all say it's the 100-year storm. At that rate, one st three storms in three months, I guess it's the every month storm. Let's hope we don't have another uh, winter like we did uh, this past year. However, exactly where those illegally uh, parked uh, materials, commercial materials are being stored, is 100% underwater. In terms of uh, prior use and you know, what has been done in the past, uh, a few things. If we look back in history, airlines used to allow people to smoke on planes. That changed. Uh, a lot of things change over time, including, I guess I could possibly, with that in mind, say I'd like to try and park something here. This photo was taken in uh, 1897. It was the span of land between Third Cliff and Fourth Cliff. That no longer exists. We know it's a map of the North River at this point. So bottom line, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, we have a lot of people here who are absolutely very, very passionate about this. Uh, at the last meeting, it was requested that there be total immediate removal of all materials. We're asking for that again. Uh, it was at the time that the commission had suggested uh, a continuance in asking for uh, more information. Obviously, that information request was not fulfilled satisfactorily. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, uh, we do have a bunch of people here who I think uh, may want to say other things as well, but uh, in support of the 53 signatories that I sent in, we're asking for a complete and immediate removal of the materials. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Before we start, can I just say one thing? It's real important that people sign in in a process like this for any future activities. We've got a, a list yeah, of people. Do we have a sign-in sheet? Yeah, I'll pass this around. It's just name and address. If you, do you want an email address, Pat? Nope. Okay. <laughs> it's for the appeal process. And Don't be we're not going to contact people. All right. It's easier to communicate. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, board uh, members, my name is Bill McKinnon. I live on 168 Central Ave. I'm a lot. Uh, I've been coming down to Hummelock since 1944. And that area which we're talking about, one time, the water used to come right up to the edge of the road. And the town in the late 50s, I don't know the exact date period, but they decided to dredge the channel that goes into Hummelock. And they took all the refuge and they piled it in front of our house, in front of uh, Mary's house. And it became a land all of a sudden, where we used to keep our boats right on the on the side of the road with a rock. Okay. Now the point I'm getting at is I don't understand why the town decided to divide those up into lots. Even if they're wetland lots, it should have been conservation land. It, number one, it should never they should, they would have never got away with putting that refuge in front of our house. When you say in front of your house, you're talking about the piece between Central Ave and South Ro and the South River? Yes. Not directly in front of, not between your home and Central Ave, but no. the strip of land. We're right along Central Ave. Right. So, right across so the that, river. you're saying that that material between Central Ave and the South <laughs> River is dredge material? Exactly. All the dredge material that was put there, it was big sand dunes for the longest time, and then eventually growth. Uh, okay, appreciate that. The, okay, the, the, the point I'm getting at is why did the town decide to divide that up into lots and so? I wasn't around then. 
Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what's caused, I'm not, this I'm, is I'm what's real. caused the problem. That, that land should have been conservation land right from the beginning. It should never have been sold for very small amounts. Well, the community preservation has bought a lot of open space in different parts of the town. Maybe that's a consideration. That's right. It, to me, th this should be conservation land, this, this land. Now, I, I understand where Russell Clark's coming from. He's running a business and he's trying to have room for that. But I don't think this land is appropriate for running a business. Okay. Now, I don't have any problems if someone wants to store a boat. Not on a trailer, but store a boat, and when the tide comes in, they can use their boat. We all, we always did that. You know, that's part of Hummerlock. But as far as running it as a business, this is not the right type of land for that. Now, well, we, what we have to stick to is whether or not it's the right resource area to put something on. As far as whether a business is I understand what you're saying, but we, we just need to make sure we're careful. Well, you, you know, there's, there's the planning board deals with business, and, and I'm not trying to pass the buck. I just want to be sure it's well, dealt divided, with. They divided it up. Evidently, Elmo Batoni and Judy Batoni had an in, insight into what they bought off a lot of those lots before any of us had a chance to know that they were selling lots because it happened during the winter months. Do you know what, what time frame that was? When uh, I would say in the 70s. In the 70s, uh, the Bertonis, uh, the original Bertoni parents who owned the house where the uh, Levanskis are, right? what's the street address there? 150. We're probably diverging a little bit. I'm just curious. So uh, I history. In, yeah. in, in the where 70s, when, it, when, when the people who uh, lived at uh, 150 uh, retired. Uh, your name, sir. I would care to testify later. Robert Branca, B R E N C A. Okay. Well, this isn't about that, and I apologize. I probably shouldn't yeah. drift that way. All right. But they they sat on the land. They didn't uh, use it for a business or anything else. Okay. To this day, I think they were holding it. I, I think the most important part for us is that Mr. Clark owns it because he can't file or do anything there. So. That's right. Mr. It, Mr. Clark owns it now. Okay. And he, won't, he has. Uh, a complaint that he wants to run a small business, and I understand that. But our, our point of view is, when I went to the assessor's office and said, how come I get so many taxes? They said, well, look at your view. Well, if my view is a... We, we, oh, we, right. we don't deal with views. <laughs> I know. I, I'm the sorry. Point, the, the point I'm getting at I, And I'm really not trying to be smart. I, I just want to make sure we stick to the issues that we can address as a commission. Well, but this is a total town issue. It's not simply uh, and, conservation. And, and in, you know, we, the Conservation Commission, are proponents of a lot of pieces that go before the community preservation to acquire open space. Right. And so, you know, I'm just talking out of the right. box, but maybe that's a, a potential that, that the town could consider. Um, you know, we've, we've acquired property in other parts of town and, and maybe that's a possibility that could spin from this but that's not what this hearing's about no, I appreciate it okay okay yes sir may, may I speak yep again just get the name again so Carol can uh, it's, it's uh, Robert Branca B-R-A-N-C-A on the 164 Central it's a, a uh, I've been coming to Homer Rock since 1951 and uh, that land has, uh, is, is the last vestige of anything natural, if it's uh, indeed <coughs> natural <laughs> as, we, as we speak. Uh, I think it was probably originally subdivided when uh, Fort Cliff got the, uh, Fort Cliff development in, in the late 1800s. Uh, it took over the land, if you really go into the history of it. Right, well, I probably diverged a little oh, there. Okay. I shouldn't have. We'd, but, and, and, and the dredging, I think, was probably in the late, more in the late 40s, because I, I remember in the, in the 50s when I was first there, uh, which was my first in, uh, uh, time in Hummer Rock, uh, I rented uh, Mr. McKenna's house, or my parents did, and uh, uh, in that regard, what he described uh, as having changed and, and been put there, 
was there when when I first uh, occupied his house. So I would have to say the dredging, just as a point of clarification, was probably a few years earlier. Okay. Um, just this this as I look surprising to hear sometimes. Yeah, this 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 as I look at it is the last vestige of any practically natural habitat that's left. There were critters. There's bunnies. There's uh, all kinds of wildlife. Uh, there's uh, innumerable species of birds that flutter in and out. And I just don't understand sometimes the extent we go uh, as a commission. And it's not just situated. It's, uh, you know, we could say this in any town uh, with the uh, uh, eco-friendly attitude and uh, <coughs> such as your commission and other people would, would propose. Uh, and I don't know, somewhere is there's a middle ground, but you know, on, on some issues. I was told, and I do not know if it's true, but for the life of me, if it is true, and I'm, I'm not trying to argue it, but if it is true, uh, I don't understand uh, from listening to some people from the HBIA, that's the Hummer Arch Beach Improvement Association, it's a civic association there. Um, this year, according to some people with that group, um, the Conservation Commission, and I don't know if this one is told. Uh, we has, don't take anything personally. Okay, has, 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 has stopped the town, has, has, has denied the use of a town truck on the beach, uh, which has, which has uh, helped with a town cleanup for the past 15 to 20 years. Uh, in the next breath, uh, you, uh, you, you would allow, you know, encroachment, and it's from, from the I don't think that I just I'm not yeah. sure where that came from, and I I think that well, I don't, I'm this this you'll find through this process that there's overlaying jurisdiction yeah. from different people, which you know we've been as frustrated as you whether it comes to someone protecting their home with a seawall or whatever things that this commission may feel are appropriate, the state may not agree with, and then even within that you'll have different groups of people that feel different things are appropriate and and so I don't believe that this commission ever directed the town not to clean I can tell you that's not anything to do with conservation well, commission okay I'm just simply saying it, it was, is was, the town was, but it's was not laid out yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, uh, the town may have decided they don't want to spend the money on it yeah, yeah. but it wasn't our commission telling them not to if, if I may uh, say something actually by reason of giving some input to Mr. Clark and I I bought uh, popcorn and ice cream from his grandmother and I bought stamps from his <laughs> grandfather and I fully respect the Clark heritage in, uh, in Hummer. Um, and no one wants to see Mr. Clark hurt. There's several people in this room who would buy the whole shebang from him at a profit to him because we don't want to see. And we care, as the Bertone's kid who originally bought most of those and he doesn't own all of them. There are some strips in between the he owns that are owned by yeah, all, we, all we're concerned about is the ones I, that he files on tonight. I, I, I understand that, but uh, I'm, I'm simply saying, uh, it, it, somewhat independent of conservation business, that no one here is personally against Mr. Clark and wants to see him hurt, okay? Uh, it's the last vestige of something natural that that, that is a, a habitat for many species, okay. let alone the, the floral and the... the well, know, hopefully when he gets a, 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 an environmental person out there to market, we'll, we'll have a little better idea of the resource. And, and I would reiterate that there are several people that want to see nothing done with it. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bertonis, who originally bought it, said to me and my wife at one point, uh, this is our gift to the people of the Hummer Rock. They, they, they wanted to protect it. Now, obviously, through their estate, it fell to their daughter. And none of us knew that this property was okay. for sale. And I, and I don't mean to cut you short, but if there's anybody else in here, thank, thank, thank you very you. much. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Mr. Jansen? Uh, yeah, 20 power conservation, Keith Jansen, 148 Central. Uh, there is actually a zoning bylaw that uh, falls under the domain of the Conservation Commission. Uh, it is um, uh, in the existing bylaws that is stated uh, in the uh, petition that no permit shall be granted which will adversely affect the natural character of the area in which the land exists. And that is important. So there, there is precedent for the Conservation Commission to act from a zoning perspective. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, Bill McKinnon, uh, Thank you. 68 Central Web. Uh, the problem I have, and it goes back to what you're saying, you need a continuance because you've got to know how big the docks are. 
or how small the dots are. I mean, this is wetlands. If, 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 can we store small dots versus big dots? Well, that was one of the things I said. The other thing is we really want to know the boundaries of the wetland delineation of, of where is the dune. If it's not dune, we need to know it. If it is dune, we need to know it. That's more important than how many boats. But that's an example of the other information that wasn't included. Right. Now, throughout my years in Cumberland, during the 3rd of July, police used to go up and down Central Land and said no party either side on Central Land. Now, all of a sudden, oh, that's private property. They can, they can park there. When, when are the rules changed? This year, this year, they, in fact, last year, they put signs in my telephone pole right beside my house and said, no parking on Central Land. Now, all of a sudden, well, that's private property. They can park. Well, that would be something I guess you'd have to ask the police department. Oh, uh, it's, it's, this is land, this is supposed to be protected land. Can we have cars and trucks parked in front of our house? I don't know. On the 3rd of July, there were 40 to 50 cars parked on his land uh, across from the uh, That's right. several of these abutments. Okay. But, all right, so, again, we've, this, we're going to go through a process. I, I think the, up to the commission, I mean, we could obviously just deny this application. He could file another one. He's asking to go for a couple more weeks to get information that we've requested. I can't believe this is the first time for a lot of, if you live in Hamarok, it's not the first hearing that you've been to um, for your own property. And oftentimes these hearings get continued multiple times to get the correct information. Before the clock hearing, we had a, a violation notice for a pretty significant violation. Someone went in, flattened a huge area, dug it all out, cleared it. Um, they're on town property. We're going to have to go through a process to get to that, to get that remedied. Um, we unfortunately don't have the ability to just say to someone, fix it right now, we want it done. Everyone has a due process in this, as you do on your property, Mr. Clark does as well, and, and we'll go through that, and, and we'll try to do it as correctly as we, we possibly can. Um, if any of the commission members feel differently, that's that's up to them, but I, I'd like to do this thing correctly. You, you know, I understand your concern for wildlife, there's vegetation there, but there's no, in my eyes, there's no bulldozer, there's no clearing, there's some dra traffic, there's some tire tracks, and that certainly can be an issue, but it's, when I walked the property on Sunday, we walked further down the way, there's a big area that was dug out, um, Maybe by the town. I'm not sure. Mr. Clark pointed it out to me. Did, I know something about that. So, I mean, I'm looking at that spot, and I'm seeing water travels right through this area and puts a lot of sand and stuff back on. Somehow that got altered. Um, I, I'm as curious about that as I am about this piece. Um, you know, there's a there's an issue there in my mind. Is how did that happen? Did the town have to do it to yeah. Mr. Clark? thought that possibly the town did it to get drainage off of Central Ave. But in a couple of the storms, I've seen, you know, I've gotten calls from other residents further down Central Ave that the town put material onto the property. We try to address all those things as best we can. And, and that's what we'll try to do here, is, is go through the same process. Yes, sir. That, that particular gully uh, opened up a seven, eight years ago, I would say. Did it open naturally, or was it open uh, by... Partially, partially, but you see the contractors, they're just up and down the street willy-nilly out the storms, and the town pushes things, and the town, and other people push it there, and other people take it there, and at one point, there might have been some flooding on the road, which, which is going to happen if the ocean comes over, and it does once in a while. The ocean and the river will meet sometimes, but that not being, uh, that notwithstanding, um, uh, the, the, the road can, has been flooded in several places oh, right. up and down. No, we've seen that, and we've and, seen a breach. Right, and then, and then, at some point, some contractor, because I inquired, and the town swore they never, no one in the town actually initiated that from the road. Some contractor. Did you see that, Pat? I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. some contractor years ago took it upon himself to push it in. Now then, what happened is, 
the, 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 the ocean eroded it a little, and the river comes up on the lunar tides, and, and, and the ocean eroded it a little again. It's gotten lower and lower, lower and the well, river, river is finding what, a low point. What difference does that make, though? I'm just, I'm just saying there's a lot of different well, things. Well, the river is finding a low point. That's all it's After the first northeaster in front of my house, the town made it worse. They, they, there was a little bit of a, uh, a little uh, dune there. They, they flattened it out and put it back about the beach. Okay. Now the river comes up and floods the street. Okay. That, there was just enough elevation from natural that, that the town was, they had this thing that was reaching out halfway to the, to the river, dragging it back and loading on these gigantic trucks and taking it back out to the beach. Okay. All right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. All right. It was, there for, it was there for 20 years. Okay. It was there for 20 years. And then I understand that, oh, the town's trying to build up their... Their, their federal uh, bill, so maybe the feds will pay for the whole thing. No, I guess my, my point in asking this... Well, I don't know what that deli has to do with it. But my point in asking... This is... This is okay. Excuse me. It seems to me, in walking down the beach, that there were several things that were altered along there for different... Like you point out, there have been storms, and the town or other private contractors have moved things around or altered. I, I'm just trying to get a little bit of history of this piece of property. I appreciate the fact that we found out that it's some dredge material, it sounds like. And then, is there any other things that occurred on that piece of property? I think that's important to know um, as part of this evening. Okay. Anybody else? Rosemary? Can, can you describe what Parsons you're talking about that you're mystified about? I'm no, I just, when, when, when I happen, just happened to go there with, on Sunday, Mr. Clark showed me hit the area, and then we walked further down, north and then going north. north. <clears throat> and there's like maybe a 10 or 12 foot wide swath. Looks like a road. Yeah, does. That's part of the land I own as well. Right. Yeah, this yeah. thing, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? I would like to, um, Mr. Clark's going to get the information, but I would like to make a motion for the board to have everything removed until after this is settled, whether he has a right or not to. Oh, you can make that motion. I make motion. I, I just, again, I think. We just, just had, we had Mrs. Duffy here before this that has multiple pieces that has been going on. Well, and I we have that. that stuff we, I'm just we have that motion. occur in, in many other places. If if you think that's appropriate, that's fine. But well, I do because it's been going on all summer, and I think I'm a little irritated, and um, that I understand what the people are saying. And every time I go by there, it looks a little more duck up. I'm just make, making the motion. If anyone mm -hmm. wants to second it, we'll take a vote. If not, but I, I would just okay. do that. All right. Do I have a second? What are we talking about? Do we have discussion or do we have to have a second? <laughs> if there's a discussion, that's <laughs> well, fine. Well, what are we talking about for Usually in order to have a discussion, you have a second. <laughs> okay. I just would like I'll second it so I can have a discussion. Until after what are we talking about? Two trailers? Two trailers. Is that what we're talking about? I think that's all. In some. In summary? Yes. Two trailers and uh, two or three booths. Channel one. Okay. Just have them removed. Anybody? It seems like a reasonable compromise. We have a motion and a second. Is the, uh, is the excavator still up there in the? I'll make a motion to remove that. Right. I mean, I think I just don't want to see him singled out. Everything on that side of the road, he shouldn't be the first guy to have a short deadline. Right. That short deadline has been going on since the end of April. How long has the excavator been there? I want that out. Right. I'm just saying. One was removed at at 2:42 across from 2:42. Um, that. That Are you one was about the orange excavator that yeah. was on 31A. Yeah, is yeah. it gone? That's been gone for weeks. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's gone. There was a letter uh, drafted for the property owner there to also remove a, a rubber inflatable boat and an old pier float that's kind of destroyed. So right. 
Good. So the letters are going to wherever we see things that either someone files or they get it out. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All, for, all, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It have to be one way or the other, right? No, you can abstain if you, as well. If you uh, don't vote against it, it's a yes vote automatically. Yes. Right. So I'm, I'm for it. I think it's a reasonable yes. compromise. I'm so, so you're for the motion. Yeah. All right. Can I ask a question? The reason I'm torn with this is because it seems like, from what I've observed, some other people are getting extended time when they've done things that were further back. And I, I really am all about continuity, that everybody should be judged by the same rules. And if we don't do that, I think it's wrong. And well, we have to start somewhere. That's not well, this doesn't right. seem extraordinary. Two, two trailers doesn't seem extraordinary. OK, so then, then if that would be, then every trailer that's on the Riverside and Hummer Rock should go. And there's a lot of them. Well, Pat's working on them. But is it? But is that what we're going to do? Well, it's Pat was just saying that he was. Right. That's why I voted the way that I did. Pat said he's been sending out letters to people, and okay. this is a start. If this is what we're going to do, we need to do it. Okay. So I mean, if if everybody's going to be treated the, the same way, that's, then. I mean, well, I, we still need to definitively decide. Hey, for all we know, we're going to decide that he has a right. But right now. So then, if he has a right to do that, and we've told him to move them off of there, we're just asking him to move them off until we get all but the information. How, how? How long? I mean, what this is this is this how long? What, what? Weren't we just talking about Mrs. Duffy's trees being planted a year ago? Hey, Pat knows how I feel. I'm very strong. I, I don't think what was issued tonight should have been, but that's my opinion. Penny, just as an example right now, where do we tell most people to store their docks when they have them? Not on the wetlands, not. Where, where, do, where do we tell people? They, have, they, they can't store them on the marsh. No. But where do most docks get stored? You'll find it's all that same resource area. I think those are the inf pieces of information that you need to know before you can make a, a decision like that. That, that's my own feeling, is that you do not have enough information. Yes, we've been frustrated. We've asked for information. It's been slow in coming. It's nothing new to this commission. I mean, people stand here in line waiting to get approval. They can't come to a meeting fast enough. But when we send out a, a violation piece or, or a request or something, it takes a long time. I mean, that's, that's no news to anybody on this board. No. But, but if we're going to make someone do something, I want to be sure that we are standing on the proper grounds to do that. And I'm not sure that I have enough information to say that that's true. Is this a difficult, uh, is this a difficult proposition to move them? Yes. This time of the year, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just basically space. I mean, that, that was the intent when I bought it, so. If we're wrong and Mr. Clark wants to send a bill because he stored those trailers somewhere else. Well, I, I do have another um, question. I'm sorry, sir. Do the trailers have licenses on them? License plates? Yeah. No. Because no, someone know. had mentioned that, you know, the trailers could be there because you'd be putting a boat in the water, and they don't. Yeah, I took them off. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, Mr. Hardy brought on the point. He said, you know, it's too bad that he didn't go for permission before he stored it. We would like to see people submit filings and we've That's given seat and so, we've so in, in reality you're saying well we can't make them remove it because he chose to put it on his property before he got a review uh, i don't understand I, you know maybe i'm i misunderstand here particularly if you're talking about the docks going up towards uh Hummerock. they are on sand they're not on vegetation they're not on wetlands they're, they're on sand 
sand that was never there before, but was brought over by the storms. And, and also the boat trailers that you spoke of, they, they're gone in the winter. They might be there a couple of, two or three of them in the summer. Those people put their boats back in their trailer, but they take them out of there. There's no way they're staying all winter. You know, we further down, yeah, no way, they're gone. Okay. They, they, couldn't, they couldn't stand up to the conditions. Anybody else? So where are we at? Three. Okay. Well, I'm not ready to tell them to take them off there yet. So we get, I want to get that information. Okay. Can we get a drop dead date for the date of information if we don't receive it by that date? Then he removes them? I think it, if there's a drop dead date, then the, um, the notice of intent would be dropped and you'd have to start from scratch. You know, I think you have the right to apply to do something like this. If you've missed a deadline and you're given another deadline, if you miss the next one, then you're out of luck, you'd have to start from scratch, repay the fees, re-notify a butters and all that kind of stuff, so. That's a lot of work. I it is, so try that. to hit those deadlines. I, I intend to, the, the, the wheels are in motion. That's, that's, I'm this far, I'm not about to stop at this point. So, no, it's in motion. <coughs> yes, sir. Did you give a name? I, I built a John Stanton, 130 Central Avenue. I built the house a few years ago, uh, right, right there in Central. I mean, I, everything had to be tied down, secured to the pilings. I mean, nothing could be left out to, to just, you know, wash away. Or I mean, it's just, it was just so restrictive when I built that house that, that just to allow some boat trailers and, and docks to just take off, you know, when the wave comes over the, the, over the hill rock. I mean, it's, it's, it's unfathomable. I mean, the thing could, you know, I mean, those things could get, get washed away two months from now. The no-name storm was Halloween night. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, it was a house in the river. So to leave this stuff willy nilly on, on, on land in that, in that location, I, I mean, it's a no brainer, not to mention how offensive it is to the abutters right now looking at it. I think it was last Maple Street. I mean, what, what was that? I, I mean, is there anybody complaining about that? Yes. There is. I mean, is it offensive? Is it, is it, are, they, are, the other, are the people looking at the, 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 the issues for this commission is it a violation? And I understand, but this is an offense. This is offensive to the abutters to have to look at Mr. Clark's, you know, rusty old. He, he has a commercial piece of property at the corner of Webster and Central Ave, a big yard. Paul Armstrong across the street's got a forklift. He takes his floats up on the forklift and puts them on his property in the winter. Mr. Clark can do the same thing if he wants to invest in a forklift or rent one when, when it's tough time for those floats to come out of the water. Okay. You know, put, put those rusty old boat trailers in his front yard all winter. He's already got, his, it already looks like sand from the sun. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I, I, I don't think that's a. Well, uh, you may not think it's appropriate, but that's, that's, what it, okay. that's what it is to me. All right. Do we, um, what do we think we need here for time to get the additional, or, or what do we want for time? How soon do we want this? Well, I think you have a motion, you have a yay, a nay, or an abstain, and you decide whether you want it in or out. That's kind of separate from the notice of intent information. Well, in, in my mind, it didn't pass. Huh? Didn't okay. Understand. So, oh, you did. I mean, is it realistic that we can get this information in? I mean, you haven't spoken with her, but I mean, we'd like to get this going. We have a meeting in two weeks. And I, I think, in, in fairness to the rest of the folks that are here, I mean, obviously, you've heard the, the number of people that are frustrated with this. And the commission's frustrated with the amount of time that's gone on. So I think you can appreciate that and realize that we've got to bring this to fruition or, or you need to get your information to us mm -hmm. on a timely basis so that we can move forward. What, um, <clears throat> with the changes, I guess, between the chairman and, and you, Pat, um, how quick does things have to get to the board? I mean, the last time I was at a meeting, I had three days to get the the uh, NOI in for mailing and, and the board wants the information ten days prior. It was a so week, it but um, I mean that's I haven't even 
met the wetlands lady. That's tough right. for somebody I've never had a, a business relationship with, I, I think. I mean, I'm not. I mean, it would be easier to grant an extra two weeks if the stuff was removed in the meantime. You know, the two trailers and the two. I got buoys out of there. I mean, then, then we could maybe, if you uh, can't get the wetlands done in two weeks, then we'd be looking at September 4th. Maybe I mean, that I can almost guarantee. That's, I, I think, Len Lenore I could be in touch with without a question and have her down there. I don't know what her schedule is. It's a, it's a lot of question marks for that. You could John, show John's on board. He's ready to go. If I call him up, he'll come right down and, and take care of it. You could show some goodwill by taking them out, though, too. I, I, if I had a place to put them, I would, and I... I I got the buoys. Two of the buoys are gone. Uh, those were the tire tracks these. that were shown today. I went out to grab a buoy today, one of the channel markers. So are they gone now? There's one left. That one could go in the junk pile. I could bring that to the transfer station this week. That's got a uh, rotted eye all the way through. It just, it, it's, like I say, these last two, they were used for an emergency, so. I mean, I think at that point I could come in with a with everything you've asked for and. Keep chance one forty eight central. So what I think I just heard is that it's it's rotting junk that's been left there. I'm sorry. Mr. Uh, Parker said that uh, something would be taken to the transfer station because it's useless and it's rotted all the way through. I think is what I heard. That's true. Yeah, yeah, but there's a way to tie a line to it if you need one for an emergency. I had one that I needed in Green Harbor earlier this year, and I have two that I used um, the other day in the North River. And if they work, then new ones will be purchased. So certain things I just don't let go of right away. Okay. So the buoys are leaving. Two are gone. The other one, I'll I'll grab it tomorrow. What I'd like to see is 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 that the next even sooner I want to see an agreement that you, I mean I would assume that you make some sort of contractual agreement <coughs> with an environmental consultant I can uh, call immediately I'll let you know uh, I'll have Lenore Lenore contact you to say yeah Mr. Clark called me but I'm, I'm on board okay. I don't even know if she'll take the job I mean that's the one I'm shooting well for. you gotta have that either her or somebody else like I said I'm on our messing uh, machine twice today so I'm, uh, I, I mean I don't want to have a meeting like this every hearing either. I, no, I me neither. I had other stuff to do tonight. <laughs> so by the end of this week, we have a, an agreement with a wetland scientist to go out to do your site. Okay. And we gave several names. If she can't do it, then... I have them written down, yes. Yeah. And exactly. Yeah. That, that's my first pick. And how, how late could commission members get the written report in time to be ready for the next meeting? I mean, if it, we say seven days, if it were three or four days, would that, I mean, if it allow us to keep on schedule or not? Well, the only thing, you would just be a little careful with, if we set that, that we get it, you know, if it comes in on Friday or comes in on Thursday afternoon and Carol's not here on Friday, I mean, that, that gets a little dicey. Right, right. But I'd say five, I think five. <laughs> to What's your no, no, no. Not five minutes, yeah, five days. I have to what? I don't know. When do you have to have this? In? Typically, we take information 10 days before a hearing, yeah. correct? Correct. Typically, we ask for new information a week before the hearing. Correct. So. You don't have to re-advertise this. No, 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 no. What Pat's saying is, is in, in order, we, we want to get this report from the engineer as soon as possible. The commission members, I think, are willing to look at it mm -hmm. immediately. So if it was, like Pat's asking, is it three or four days prior to a meeting, would that give us enough time? And we'd also need to get that information out to anybody else that was interested. That's your exception to another rule, though, if you don't give it a week ahead of time. Right. I'm just saying, if we continue this at the next me at the next meeting, what are we going to have to present? I mean, you guys don't need to come here and and go through this or vice versa. Right, because if they can't do it this week, if she can only do it next week, then we're already within seven days. Right, and I think that's a pretty. I don't know what what you've found, but one of the problems in getting.
consultants out right away. It doesn't have, especially in the summer. It's not happening that fast. And get a reasonable report with enough time for somebody to research the piece and come back with. Um, yeah. Well, I'm for ex continuing this to what's the meeting after next? September 4th. September 4th. The meeting, the yes. next meeting's the 19th, and then the next one will so be I want to continue this September 4th, so 4th. that gives you even extra days. The, all the buoys are out. Nothing else goes on that property until we... Correct. Okay. I agree to that, yes. Okay, I make a motion to continue. To um, eight, let me see. Mr. Clark. Central Ave to Wednesday, September 4th at 6.40. And it should include a notice of intent, not an abbreviated notice of intent. All right. With the wetland delineation and <coughs> numbers of boats and all the information on the checklist. There's an NOI checklist. And that should be completed. Everything Pat just said. Could I just mention second? one thing about the it was a very good comment about the police telling people to park on private property, and you made a great point. The police were trying to get everybody off the street. So once people get off the street, then they were in our jurisdiction. We don't have signs there saying you can't park there either. So we, I spoke with the chief, and we identified this as a problem. What we'd like to do is he can have no parking on the street, and we need no parking in the dunes, and maybe it's private property, maybe Russell or whoever owns it wants to be involved with no parking, but that was a good point. And it shouldn't happen, and it did, and we're going to try to resolve that. Because so. it never was an issue before. Right. Right. It was always no parking, and the police would ticket anybody that was parking on the side of the road. Yeah. They have big things to cover on the 3rd of July. They're chasing other things down. So, But you're right, and we're, we're going to try not to allow that to be a parking area for anybody. So. Since they've done away with the contracts, we don't have yeah. the problems that we had in the past. Now it's parking. Okay. okay. All right. So the 4th. The 4th, September 4th. September 4th at 6.40. And that's a Wednesday. So it gives you two extra days. 6.40. <coughs> Do you have a second? Yeah, it was second when you need to. All in favor? All right. Aye. Thank you. I got my homework. Thank you. Hmm. <laughs> Locker C at its finest. I mean, it's. There's no black and whites. I'm caught in um, what else do we have on the agenda? Um, we have the order of condition from the in law meeting in Manhill, I'm sorry. Seriously. Huh. <laughs> what do we have left? Order conditions for Manhill Road. Yeah, I make a motion to accept them as written. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's it. Um certificate of compliance for twenty six Peggy Beach Road. Blank, right, yes. Peggy Beach. Oh, that's. Did we forget something? No. No. We just wanted to hear. Yeah. You don't have conditions that you have to get, so we're gone. Well, we got to. It's interesting all the other stuff. Sorry. No, 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 no. Maybe we could provide some entertainment. How did they get lost in the shuffle? Poor people had to sit through all that. Yeah. So, do we have that? What? <laughs> 20, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll wait for Pat to say that everything's done right. 26 Piggity Beach And I'm drawing a blank on which one it was. So I just it, it was the one Carol. in the parking lot. Which one? The one in the parking lot, Piggity Beach. Yes. Yes, they're all set. Okay, okay. great. That's the first one as you come into the parking lot. Right. Yep. Okay. That is all set. Yep. Okay, so we can give that uh, 161 Summer Street. They were not home because this was the two-year follow-up to make sure the plantings have taken so I called to see if I go out and meet with them 
They have a funny schedule, so I haven't been out there to meet with them yet. I called so them not, again today. We're not ready for that one. Not ready, but they're not in a big rush, but um, I'll try again. All right. 109 Humrock Beach. That one's all set. This is actually the firehouse. This is the Webster corner. This is the first one, so it's the corner. first one that was built. So as long as they meet building code on the pilings, Oh, right, right, right. right. We were up there. Just, yeah. yeah, and they left the gravel through that what used to be the passageway, so they did what they were supposed to do in that area. But it'll be Neil saying whether they, you know, meet the code or don't meet the code. Mm -hmm. So, All right. What else have we skipped over? I do think it was interesting with Dave Ball and for the seawalls, and yeah. I just. I don't know where all that's going. Yeah. But I'd love to see that bylaw change on the deck. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's something that, that we can, yeah. Possible. We well, as long as we, we have to be very careful because they're very different. Like you take a guy in Hummer Rock. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, the key. I totally right. agree where they need right. access. But I would just like love to see from here, right. here on them all be removable or flip up gives them added protection. Right. Who's going to bring that forward to town meeting? Would that I be? I think Dave is working on it. Seawall Committee I'll give him a or call. DPW or planning or building. Yeah. I mean, someone's got a sponsor. I mean, from our end, just even behind that, we can certainly work with mm, people yeah. as we condition stuff right. and say, listen, you got to. We should help you help write the bylaw too. I'll look at it, see how we Carol. can be involved yeah. on that. So. Well, I think that's what Dave said. That yeah. They they started the work last year, but they didn't get it together in time. They at least have one person that's a member of that commission or something. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I don't think he's looking for special town meeting, which is no. Uh, so he's no look, looking for next. So we could do that over the winter. But I think yeah. It's a good thing you go by colors because I wouldn't get anything else out of this one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. 17 in horrible condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think, you know, we're going to wind up conditioning all those projects. Which ones? Anything that comes in oh, as a seawall. Sea oh, yeah, yeah, right. And it would right. be much better if I think we were part of that process. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and what do you do with the ones that are there and they're permanent and they're on, you know, I mean, the grandfather's only anything going forward or revised? You know. Well, I always start to ask, may ask the question, who, who owns the seawalls? You know, it, it varies yeah. from place to place. Mm -hmm. Well, look what happened when we had the break and how, how long it took before we got that repaired. Right. That was, and it all had to do with property death. And I'm wondering what, if you know, if we are do apply or get money from FEMA, what conditions they place on us doing things in order to get their right. money. Bill, Bill, were you on that committee or just waterways? Just waterways, yeah. Do they meet with seawalls? They did originally. We and FEMA came down and met with us, and uh, quite a while ago, and they did. Uh, it was a grant a couple of years ago, but I don't think we could match it. Has the town administrator talked to you at all about this, the, the new FEMA maps? And what are her expectations? Just trying to get a FEMA person out here to, to give the information straight from the horse's mouth. She went and met with uh, Representative uh, Cantwell, and mm -hmm. she's called Lynch's office. I'm thinking there's going to be a meeting in Boston this week because FEMA isn't sending people out to meet with, uh, you know, groups that are interested in these maps. So they're going to have a community meeting that will be covering Marshfield, us, and somebody else, and uh, that hasn't been scheduled yet. So we're going to go in and meet with whoever we could talk to at FEMA this week. <coughs> talk about Samson and Goliath. Wow. So. Yeah. Yeah, this is a... Is yeah. there an appeals process to, to actually, can, uh, with enough information, can you submit? The period started July 20th, but... There is. There's a big packet of information on how towns can appeal and then how individuals can appeal. It's hundreds of pages of <laughs> dense mm. stuff, but we have it. And, uh, Frank's got some notes. He wants to challenge their findings. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of pe people are upset that they're all of a sudden in a flood zone and they weren't... Well, they've broadened the net. Yeah, they considerably, really and then they've, yeah. but the other problem is they've raised the elevation, so that people that were 
were compliant, yeah. are now going to have a problem. If you raised your house to 16 feet and had a break on your insurance, yeah. and now it's yeah. at 17, yeah. you're back in the yeah. Yeah. hot seat. And you yeah. spent eighty thousand dollars on yeah. fifty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. And they said they And you uh, you complied with their number, the number they gave you. I heard that right. there was like a twenty percent like an incremental yeah. we changed 20 our mind. over four years. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you're gonna get years. you within four or five four years. years. Yeah. West End's looking better all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure is. <laughs> I like to get some out there too. That's true. It's a matter, matter, it's a matter, matter of time. What? All right. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. Second. Aye. Favor. Aye. 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 Aye.